to worship you. The birds are chirping right now. God giving you glory. The wind is blowing in the right direction. Father, to honor who you are. The waves in the water, God, are singing bells to you, God. We praise you, God. In spite of ourselves, God, we give you glory. You're going to sit there and be quiet all you want to. I got 
your back. God, I'll do whatever you need. I can be your armor bearer. And I say, Amen. Yes, you can. Amen. So she have her stuff together. I don't even be knowing what be going on. She had the bag set. She checked in with her dad and her mom. Amen. I'm loving it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. To all of my friends, I see my sister Rebecca in the house. Amen. And my awesome, 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 I call them my nieces and nephews. Amen. Amen. To Morgan and CJ. Amen. In the back. Amen. Give an honor to them for coming out. I appreciate you guys. Amen. For coming out. To all of you, saints and friends, pastors, evangelists, ministers in the gospel. Amen. I'm not going to belabor the time because I believe that God has something to say. Amen. Are you expecting something great today? Yeah. Are y'all expecting something? Yeah. Can I ask you to do me a favor? I need you to hold on to the anointing of God. Listen, I don't mind you pulling on my coattail. Amen. Pull on the anointing. Pull on the, not me. Pull on the anointing of God. So that every word can resonate with you. Amen. So that every word can plant a seed in you. Amen. Hallelujah. So I need you for the duration of my time to pull on the anointing. I don't know about you, but I have been experiencing something that I felt was very familiar. And I almost gave it the wrong title. I almost gave it the wrong diagnosis. And I felt like I was going on some highs and then coming down to some bottom lows. Amen. Anybody ever been there? You feel like you want a roller coaster ride when you get so high and it's like you're unstoppable. You're like Superman and Superwoman, and then all of a sudden you just fall flat. It, no, that's just me. Oh, okay. Y'all can talk to me. Amen. So I've been feeling those highs and lows for a few months now, and I've been asking God, what is this? Why am I experiencing this, Bishop? Why, why does it feel like I'm going in cycles? But God began to speak to my spirit and said, listen, there's an anointing on your life. Amen. Come on. And I thought it was what I already walk in, right? Yeah. But God says, you have been called to the mountains. Oh so I said, God, what does that mean, being called to the mountains? And then God began to deal with me in this message and show me exactly where the people of God are in this season, where the pressure feels so great, where they feel like everything that you do, you do it with great intent, but it still never comes out to be what you want it to be. Somehow somebody misinterpret your heart's desire and somehow somebody mess up how you're trying to put your hand to the plow and it looks like you're doing something enviously or you're doing something with jealousy. I hope I'm not talking about myself in here today. But anybody ever been in a place where you just want to be pleasing to the Father and you want to give him your very best, but men have a way of twisting stuff up and turning things around and even getting you a little frustrated when you can't. I'm already preaching and I'm not supposed to. Anybody been there before? So God says, Jakima, I want you to tell my people that they've been called to the mountains. They've been called to the mountains. And then God told me, but listen, it's not just any kind of mountain. It's a mountain that is entitled No Fall Zone. See, those of you that understand skiing and snowboarding, you might understand what I'm saying when I say the no-fall zone. There's two sports. Can I take my time with this so you guys can understand? There's two sports that are popular in the winter time, and that's skiing and snowboarding. And what these people do, they go to the highest mountain bishop and they take all of their equipment, they're professionals at this thing. And for the thrill and for the excitement, they set themselves up on a high mountain and they jump off. Right? Amen. So many of us today are having some mountain tops and some experiences and we're facing some tough decisions and we have to trust God even more than 
what we have ever done before. And sometimes we misinterpret what God is saying because the pressure is so great and the enemy is so strong. We think that it's the enemy who's coming to attack us when the reality is God has set you up on the mountaintop. Right? But for the believers, the mountaintop is not luxurious. For the believers, for the one who really love God, it's not all glamorous. The mountaintop is not about how much money you can produce. It's not about how many cars you have. It's not about how many vacations you can take. The mountaintop for the believer is an assignment. So, before we can even move in the direction that God calls us to move in, we first have to make sure that we identify who we are and why we're at the mountaintop. Because some of us get up there and we forget what our assignment was. Are you in here? So I want to talk real briefly about these two sports. There's a lady named Kate DeLargeris. She dropped down 29,000 feet from the Mount Everest. Now we're not just talking about any mountain, we're talking about the only, the biggest mountain in the entire world. And while I love watching them, and while I'm okay with them having this excitement, I'm kind of wondering how is it that you will risk your very life for a moment of thrill and excitement? Come on. Oh. She dropped down 29,000 feet. And if you sit down and ask anyone that practices, any professional that practices this particular sport, they said it looked cool. <laughs> Look good. Now, if you know me, I'm a spontaneous breed, amen? But this is some things I ain't going to do. 29,000 feet. How is it that the unbeliever can have faith? Thanks. 
back my dance once and fell right on my face. But we're not going to talk about that. It's not like a common fall where you can pick yourself or catch yourself. Anybody been there where you fall and you just caught it and you looked around and make sure anybody looking at you? This type of fall is so steep and then it's rocky and then you got all the snow that's clouding your judgment. There's so many different dynamics in this fall. That's why it's called the no fall zone. A little more history and then I'm getting into the word because I hear you saying, okay, what's got to do with the word? This sport, do some study on it. Originally, it was for the people in Europe to transport things. It wasn't a really a, a sport. They made it into one. It was for the use of them to carry uh, 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 goods from one place to another. Amen? So when we're talking about the mountaintop experience, when we're talking about God having us to climb up these mountains, and I know it was rough for you to get there. You almost ran out of water. It was a dry place for you. And God, why would you get me to the mountaintop and then tell me to jump up? Why would you get me to the mountaintop, God? After all that I sacrificed, after the blood, sweat, and tears, after me crying late in the midnight hour, why? And 
when he was obedient to God, he was then authorized to transport blessings to all nations. Are y'all following me in here? He was given authorization by God to transport the blessing through his obedience. Now he says, bless this your nation. Okay, let me give you one more. Let me give you one more. Just one more example. Let's talk about Moses in the burning bush. God visited Moses on the mountaintop of Horeb. The, call, the mountain called God, the mountain of God. It was there where God spoke to Moses and told him, he said, listen, I need you to go and break the spirit of oppression off of my people. He was given the assignment to go and talk to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to what? Let my people go. The mountaintop is where you get your instructions. But somehow we glorify this thing. So he was given the assignment to transport them, the people of God, out of bondage into a promised land. Do y'all see where we're going today? So what are you saying, prophetess? How does this relate to me? What, how it relates to you is because God is saying in here today, do not lose sight of why I have you climbing this mountain. You can't afford to lose the instructions. You can't afford to lose what God is telling you to do in this season. You can't afford to parade too long because you might miss something. And if we see the mountaintop as material gain, we see the mountaintop as an opportunity to be boastful and prideful. If we see the mountaintop the way the world sees the mountaintop, then we lose our vision. Yes, yes, yes. We lose vital signs. Amen? Amen. So God said, don't get too busy having fun at the top of the mountain in your high place. Don't get too busy caught up parading around because the reason why I brought you up here and so that you can transport something back. But what is that? What is it that God is tasking us with that we will be able to take from glory and then deposit it in the earth realm? What is it that God wants us to take from him and then spread it to the believers of God? Well, I want you to draw your attention to Matthew, the 17th chapter. And while you're grabbing that, I want you to take a thought. You're in a no-fall zone, but jump. Come on, jump. jump. You're in a no-fall zone where it's risky. It's too high for you. You're afraid of heights. You're fearful. The odds are stacked against you. It doesn't look like you will make it if you chose to trust God this way. It don't look like you'll be able to endure if you trust God in this magnitude. It doesn't look like something is going to go broken. Your head might get broken. Your neck might get broken. But there's a risk to serving God. But jump. Amen? So Matthew, the 17th chapter, and I'm going to start with the first verse, and I'm going to skip around just a little bit. Amen. Somebody shout the no fall zone. No fall. It says, six days later, three of them saw that glory. Jesus took Peter and his brother, James and John, and led them up a high mountain. Somebody say high mountain. High mountain. His appearance changed from the inside out right before their eyes. Some light poured from his face. I'm reading the message version. Amen. Hallelujah. So it might be a little different. And his clothes were filled with light. And then they realized that Moses and Elijah was also there in a deep conversation with him. Now prior to this, Jesus had to prepare his disciples. Amen. And he had to tell them, he said, look, I'm getting ready to 
go from here. And it's something about that Peter Bishop. He's always trying to stand in the way of God. Not intentionally. He just loved him so much that he wanted to be with him. You gotta watch your love. You gotta watch your love. Make sure you're not in the way of what God is telling you to do. But Peter had just told Christ, no, 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 you can't live. You can't leave here. And Jesus had to rebuke Peter. Y'all remember that? So now moving forward, it says three days, six days later, Jesus took three of them, three of the disciples, James, John, and Peter. And the Bible said he took them high on a mountaintop. The Bible says that they saw Jesus begin to change. Yes. His appearance became an appearance of light. Uh -huh. Amen? Yes, yes. And then the Bible says that he saw, they saw that Jesus was in a deep conversation with Moses and Elijah. Now that right there took me for a moment. You bring your disciples with you. And what could be so deep that you're talking now to Moses and Elijah who have already gone away? What could have the conversation been? Doesn't tell us in the word of God what that conversation was. But while they were in a deep conversation, that old Peter came and he interrupted the move of God. And he said, oh my God, this is awesome. I see Elijah and I see Moses. This is beautiful. I can see our forefathers. Jesus, why don't you just build a memorial here? Yeah. How is it, Peter, that you're so comfortable with interrupting the move of God to, to build a memorial for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. That tell you what his mindset was. He's not amongst the living. Why? Because only people who believe someone is dead build memorials. That's good. That's good. What we building a memorial for if they're not? Oh, That's good. That's good. So it teaches me the mindset. It teaches me why God why God has to rebuke us sometimes. Because although our intentions may be good, we're not on the right path. God says my ways are not your ways, neither my thoughts are your thoughts. So sometimes God has to rebuke us. Yes. This time, the Bible says, if you keep reading, it says, then a voice from heaven came. Jesus didn't speak this time. He didn't rebuke Peter this time. The Bible says that a voice from heaven came. God says, here is my beloved, who I am well pleased. Oh, he told them, he said, listen to him and follow his instructions. He had to change the mindset of Peter, but when they heard the voice, if you read the Bible, Bishop, let me know. When you read it, it says that the disciples fell to the ground. Come on, come on. Huh? Yeah. Somebody say fall. Fall. Oh. Uh -huh. So they fell to the ground. And God says, in verse 4 it says, he told them, I'm sorry, verse 5. He said, while he was babbling on like this, a light radiant cloud enveloped them, surrounded from the deep in the cloud of voice. See, this is my son, marked by my love. He said, listen, he says, focus on my delight. Listen to him. In other words, Peter, get yourself out the way. In other words, stop celebrating Get your mind back on track. Too many of us right now is celebrating all the wrong things. God has gotten you to a place where you're no longer in poverty. God has gotten you to a place where you want that good paying job. God, come on, you don't help me. Don't help me in here. Nobody gonna help me. Nobody, nobody. God has gotten you, gotten you to a place where you're not just driving that Ramsey car. 
I'm glad that you can see my blessing. I'm glad that you can see me working for you. I'm glad that you realize that I am your provider. But do you know at the mountaintop is where I give you instructions? Do you know at the mountaintop is where I want my glory to be revealed? Do you understand that there's a people waiting for you? How much longer are you going to celebrate? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I have no problems with people who ski and snowboard. They turn something that had purpose into recreation activities. Ah, come on, y'all. How often do we turn things yeah. that's supposed to be purposeful yeah. in our life yeah. into recreation? Yeah. This is the house of God. Yeah. This ain't the time for you to show off what you got. Get into 
that verse we love to quote. Uh-huh. We get to that verse where we got to speak to the mountain. We get in there. Stay with me. Hallelujah. He said, I went through the protocol. <laughs> Bishop, I went the way that you instruct me to go, but when I went to the evangelist, uh-oh, when I went to the minister and I told him that I was vexed with the spirit, they can't do nothing for me. The question is why? Because you remember at the mountain top when God was giving instructions, what was Peter trying to do? He was trying to build, build a memorial. He was so excited about the awesome experience that he encountered that he was willing to stay there with the dead folk. He was willing to stay there in his comfort zone. He wasn't willing to go and pursue and do what God has called him to do. So after it was time for them to jump, He jumped. But the question is, was he prepared? Because when they went to him, when they went to the disciples, they had no power. That's just like us. We're celebrating. And God is trying to make sure that his light and his glory yeah. is illuminating within us. He's yeah. trying to make sure that we understand where he's going and why he's calling us. He's trying to make sure even in tragedy, even in hard times, even in disappointment, he's trying to show you through all of these situations that you were called to a mountain and that there's a nation at the bottom of this mountain who are hungry and thirsty, waiting for you to So it says, they went to the bottom, and the man said, I did your way, Jesus. But the ones that follow you don't have no power. The ones with you ain't got no power. And I can't afford to keep going through this torment at my house. Oh, I hear you. I hear you in the spirit. I can't afford to keep dealing with this spirit. I can't, can't afford to keep going through this trauma. My mind is getting weak. My heart is getting heavy. And I keep relying on the people of God that you told me to go through. But they don't have the power. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So listen to what Jesus says. He says, What a generation. He says, no sense of God. No focus to your lives. How many times do I have to go over these things? He's telling his disciples. How much longer do I have to put up with this? Uh, bring your boy here. Now God's taking matters into his own hands. And it says that when the disciples had Jesus off to themselves, they ain't going to do it in public. Amen. They didn't want to ask Jesus why he was in there and why everybody was out there. They wait and go into the office, right? They put him on the side, they call him on the phone, and then they ask Jesus, they said, How is it that we were unable to rebuke the demon inside of that man? Come on, tell it, tell it. Oh, huh. But I love that about them because at least they asked, right? At least they went to God and tried to make it right. He said, he said in verse 20, he said, because you're not yet taking God seriously. <laughs> That's what it says. Amen, amen. You're not yet taking God seriously, Jesus said. The simple truth is that is this. If you had a mere carnal faith, he said, a puppy seed. He said, you will be able to tell this mountain to move. And it will move. He said, there is nothing you wouldn't be able to tackle. So while we think of the scripture as we can speak to a mountain, magically it jumps up, going to go over there. That's not what God is saying. What he's saying is, if you have a mustard seed of faith to believe in every 
everything that I've showed you. If you have a mustard seed of faith to understand that if you just obey me and follow me, if you have a mustard seed of faith realizing who I am and you jump out off the mountain, you will be able to see my glory set in that place. And guess what? The mountain visibly, right, and the, and the natural will be there. But because you have the power, you can speak to any situation in your life. You can speak to a demonic force. Listen, this is our problem. How is it that we relate that scripture to something tangible when God is talking about something demonic and spiritual? Trying to keep our minds sane, trying not 
to be affected by the cares of this world, trying to gain our faith. We've been trying, we've been kind, we've been blind. Yes, yes, yes. But God says your mountaintop experience is here now. Yes, God. I'm ready to show you something that's about to blow your mind. But listen, listen, it's risky because once you get a glimpse of who I am, there's no turning back. Once you see me for who I am and once I show you another side of my glory, then the enemy is going to come even harder than what he came before. And guess what? When you go back down to the bottom of the mountain and you complete that assignment, then here you go climbing up another one. Yes. This is a journey. So God is saying, if you want more, to jump. I need you to trust that I will be right where I told you I will be. Because I'm getting ready to do something in this season. I'm getting ready to show my glory in a different way. And I'm not ready to disclose to men right now what I'm getting ready to do. But all I need you to do is jump. No matter how risky it is. Yes. No, how many, no matter how many cliffs you see at the bottom. No matter how many times the enemy tells you that you're not going to survive it. I need you to jump. If you're in here today and you say, God, I'm ready to jump. Sitting at the edge of this cliff. Contemplating 